Okay, now that we're done with that, we're going to go back into this area. This area is right outside Zora Hall, the southern part of the Great Bay Coast. Um, here, if you actually follow the river down to the um, west... Wait, no, that's the east. I'm sorry. If you follow the river down to the east and watch out for the stupid levers, um, you'll actually find a waterfall. There is actually an area beyond the waterfall, but you have to have the hook shot in order to get to it. But before I do that, um, climb up here, and then in the pond right before the waterfall, you can actually find a like-like at the very bottom, and a few of these uh, bone fish as well. Uh, watch out for the like-like, and the bone fish, of course. And if you actually defeat the like-like, uh, you can actually get a heart piece, so that is what I'm doing here right now. Unfortunately, the stupid bonefish are getting in my way, though. Okay, so... I'm gonna use my fins to stun the like-like. And then attack it for... the heart piece. Alright, we got it. And hooray, we've actually formed our 12 hearts, so we only have... Eight more heart containers to go. Uh, two containers by themselves, and then uh, 24 heart pieces. That seems like a lot, but keep in mind, there's actually 52 in all, so... We have been making a lot of progress on that front. So, right here, I'm actually going to stop recording for a little while. Uh, this will probably be in the middle of a video, but if it is, don't worry, I'll be right back in a second, so... Uh, see you guys in a second for the continuation of the cycle. Okay guys, I am back with another recording session. As I said last time, the thing I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to try to get over the waterfall. Oh my god, lever. Oh! Okay, that was kind of stupid. <laughs> uh, sometimes the hookshot can actually bring enemies closer to you, so... It's not always the best fighting weapon. It is, like, one of the best fighting weapons in some of the 2D Zelda games, but in the 3D ones, I think most of the time they just bring enemies closer. Again, most of the time. Anyways, to climb up the cliffs, you need to have the hookshot to do this. I don't think there's really any way you can sequence break this part, unless you use, like, the levitating link game shark code that was in Ocarina of Time. I always love that code, just because it's, you know, funny to have Link levitating during cutscenes and stuff. Okay, so... Let's grab this tree. Okay, I'm apparently not close enough, so let's get a little closer. Okay, that's still not close enough? Come on, game. Come on. This is kind of ridiculous. And I'm not going to grab that treasure chest, because it's obviously going to be rupees, and... I have max rupees at this point, and I'm also probably going to come back here later because what's up here is actually a mini game you'll have to play four times if you want to get all the rewards. And um, since it's getting pretty close to 6 p.m., I'm probably not going to be able to get all the rewards. And plus, it'd be, you know, kind of boring to sit through four different variations of this in a row, so. Uh, I'm going to do two of these now, and then I'll do two of them later in the cycle. So we have this beaver swimming around. I don't, I'm not really sure why he's not, like, recognizing me. You got to swim into him or something? Okay, come here, you stupid beaver. Oh, I think you just have to walk onto him. Anyways, when you do that, the beaver will swim to the bottom of the river. Yeah, it's a river, that's right. You again, you can't fool me with your green clothes. You want an empty bottle, don't you? You never learn your lesson. Coo, coo, coo. Okay, I'll give you one. But, only if you can swim through all the rings in the river in under two minutes. So do you want to try? Of course, sure. So, kind of a swimming minigame. This might actually be the only swimming minigame in the game. That I remember, anyways. There's probably another one I'm not thinking about. So yeah, this really isn't too hard. All you have to do is swim through the different rings. 
and not screw up like I just did. And where the hell am I going? Okay. Controls kind of got away from me right there. But yeah, all you do is just swim through all the rings. It's pretty simple. None of the rings are really that hard to get. You will have to make a few sharp turns, but uh, thankfully the turning with the Zora is actually pretty... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's pretty reliable, I guess. You can usually make sharp turns pretty well. And also watch out for the tree branches that kind of... Or, well, would they be tree branches or tree roots? Or they, they might not even be parts of trees. They're probably just like logs or something. Although I guess logs are technically made out of trees. Or well, logs come from trees rather. So yeah, we're almost done already. But yeah, you'll pretty much have to play this uh, four times in the same cycle if you want to get all the rewards. And really, they're, they're not really that different from all the other ones. Like, there's this one and then the next one. And then the last two minigames are... Or the last two variations of this are just the first two, but with less time. So, I might end up deciding to cut those out, but... Since it's actually a game of skill, to an extent, I might keep them in just because. But yeah, once we beat the little brother, the big brother will actually come down and challenge you to pretty much the same challenge. Only difference is, uh, for his challenge, there are 25 rings, not 20. And they're also put in different locations, so it is a little harder. Still, though, I wouldn't call it really that much of a challenge, though. You can still get all the rings and the two-minute time limit pretty easily. Okay, let's not miss this ring this time. Good. And also, during this course, uh, some of the rings will kind of be um, not necessarily out of the water, but they'll be half in the water, half out of the water, so uh, sometimes you might have to jump through them. It's not really a major deal, though. So yeah, just approach each ring with caution and you should be fine. And also kind of look, look ahead to see where the rings are going to be. So you can always, you know, make adjustments to your turning and stuff like that. Oh crap. Okay, oh no. Come on, come on. Crap, did I miss it? Okay, yeah, I did. Okay. Um, I think I should still be able to do this, though. I just got a little bit behind. As I said before, they give you more than enough time to complete this. However, if this was probably the second game, I would be kind of at risk at this point of being able to finish it in time, but... Uh, that shouldn't be a problem for this run. I still have about 40 seconds to get the last five rings, and the last five rings are pretty much just in this little circle area. Oh crap, I screwed up again. Okay, I, sh I, I should still be fine though. Okay, so even if this was the second game, I still would have actually succeeded. Uh, they give you 145 in the next two games. So your reward for beating both brothers is an empty bottle. And, ironically, this is actually the um, latest bottle you can get. You can technically get the other two bottles before this. But with the way I'm kind of, you know, structuring this Let's Play, I obviously haven't gotten those yet. But I'll explain why later. Uh, for now, though, I still have some time to kill before I have to um, go back to the ranch, so uh, I'm actually going to try to get one more thing done before I um, actually go to the ranch, so I'm going to soar back to Clock Town. So one, actually deposit my rupees, and two, to actually uh, get started on a two heart piece quest I'll be... Uh, doing in this cycle as well. 
So we're back in Clock Town. Gotta go to West Clock Town. I think I mentioned this uh, at the end of the um, last cycle's last video, but uh, I currently have 41, 41 rupees in the uh, bank right now. But I'm actually getting quite a bit done in this cycle, so apparently that really wasn't much bad luck as I thought it was going to be. So just to make my rupee count even, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Put 169. Actually, no, it's 159 in the bank, and now we have an even 4,300. So, only 700 more rupees until I'm completely done with the uh, Clock Town Bank. I hope you guys don't mind. I've been doing that stuff off screen. <laughs> 